This is a 3D printed peacekeeper from Black Ops 2. And after I posted it, I got a message from a Call of Duty legend. He asked me if I could make him two things from the best Call of Duty of all time, Black Ops 3. And the first thing was the Tomahawk. So I hucked it across map and we got to work. Once it was all printed out, we were left with this. And it looks pretty great as just a base print. But we do need to prep it for paint. So we're going to start doing the absolute best part of 3D printing sanding and for this piece i actually glued the two pieces together first and then added bondo on all the cracks and any problem areas once that was dry then i hit it with a whole bunch of sanding and we smoothed the surface out then hit it with filler primer sand it again and then hit it with a black primer base coat all right so now we're here we got it all primed we got a good base here and i put up an image there of what we're going for so we're actually just going for no camos no anything this is just going to be the standard color that the combat axe, the technical name for it, uh, comes in the game. So it's got green. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of dry brushing here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start just kind of warming up the hands and everything um, and just doing some base coats of like just some browns and stuff like that all over the blade um, and like in these portions here. Um, and just kind of, you know, feel it out a little bit before we get into the green stuff. Um, I need to look and see what the best color is going to be. Uh, I got these two greens here, which are really good. This is a little bit bright for this, but this is like perfect. But I think I need a darker one as well um, to just start with as a base. And uh, yeah, then we'll go from there. All of these little grooves are going to be kind of dark and... Uh, yeah, let's get into it. All right, we're going to start off with these uh, three browns or tans. This chocolate sprinkle one. Uh, this is like a super, super dark one. Uh, it's a nice uh, a nice base. This is like a little bit more for like rust. And this is kind of what we did on, um, on that statue we did uh, for Call of Duty. And then this is kind of just like a mid-tone brown. Again, this is going to be the undercoat. We're going to be doing a lot of stuff over it. But there is some brown tones in all of this. So I just want to get a little bit on there. So we're going to go and we're going to start with our hard bris bristle brush here. And we're going to just throw down a little bit of this dark, dark brown right there. Boom. We're going to get a little bit on the brush and then we're going to get most of it off the brush. Okay. So we're going to be doing mostly, mostly dry brushing with this. And, uh, and you just kind of, you know, you're just going to kind of work it into the paint. A little bit i'm doing some swirling motions here you can really see here once i do that it really starts to bring out um just like the the grooves and stuff in the uh, in the piece we're just kind of getting some nice base colors down here and uh then we'll just kind of work up from there there's gonna be a lot of silver eventually on this we're gonna be hitting it with the good old rub and buff uh or the gilding whack should be good stuff All right, now that we got that first little coat of uh, brown in there, we're not too worried about how this is looking right now. We're just kind of just going with the flow. But we got a little bit of brown on both sides. Now we are going to go in with this slightly lighter brown. And we're going to do this in a few less spots. There's no wrong moves with this type of painting here. We're feeling it out. So this is like a little bit more of like a, like a rust color. So you'll see... As this goes on, it's got just a little bit more character, uh, just adds a little bit more depth. And for especially working with like metal, I really like the hard bristle brushes. So this brush I'm using is like the cheapest, just absolutely terrible brush that you could possibly find. And it is great for this stuff <laughs> just because it's a brushed metal look, right? For, you know, sorry for the pun, but and these hard bristles do a really good job of just like emulating like the scratches that are in metal, right? Because this is, at the end of the day, this is a very like weathered looking item. It's not, you know, squeaky clean, none of that stuff, right? Um, and I think that this just does a really good job. We'll bring out some other brushes here uh, a little bit later. However, uh, I really like this for this stuff, especially when we get to like the, the gilding wax as well this thing uh, these brushes just do 
do a incredible, incredible job. All right, now that we got these browns kind of in there, we are going to go on top of these browns and cover them up for the most part. We'll go back after this step and add some more in, but I wanted to just kind of play around and see how these look if we put them at the bottom. For the most part, this is gonna be grays and blacks and dark, right? So we're gonna go in now with the pewter gray here. This is like a mid to dark gray. Uh, and we're just gonna put this down. We're gonna be using a different brush this time. Uh, still similar type of uh, painting, but this is an older brush. It's got all kind of paint built up and, you know, I mean, these brush bristles are crazy, but what we like to see for this type of painting you know this is not about being precise this is all about feeling it out right so again we're gonna get a lot of the a lot of the paint off of the uh, off the bristles here and we're just gonna start going at it here having this black base just helps tremendously you could do a little stippling in there too It'll give gives you kind of a you know this like effect that's kind of nice here we are going to go over this also with a black wash at the end that will just kind of tie everything together but some stippling here really kind of liking that now we're back here now i think that this is our base is done i think this is really good i think we got some really nice grays and browns and rust and all this stuff we're gonna continue building on this, but now I wanna get into uh, the green part. I do have these two colors here, and this is a little bit bright. However, we're gonna be putting so many things on top of it. I think it's actually gonna be a really good color because it's quite pigmented. And then we have this very muted green, which I think will be a really good highlight on top and will help just kind of mute this one and dial it back a little bit. And then stuff like our grays and and browns and stuff that we're going to put on top of it to weather it weather it down um will continue to subdue it so we're going to go with this so we're going to do pretty much this whole handle here and then this corner uh and then there's also a little bit of green in this and a little bit of green in this so we're going to do all of those right now and here we go What we're going to do next is there's a little yellow part in here, um, but we're just going to go ahead and put that all in here. Yellow is done. Yay. All right. Now we get back into the fun part, more dry brushing. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to do the shadow part here. Let's go to this other camera here. We're going to do the shadowy parts in all of these areas here. I'm going to put a little bit of green, we'll put this new shamrock this is kind of like a neon green but we're going to be just mixing this with some of these browns and blacks we don't want to use a ton of just straight up black because i feel like it's it can be a little bit overpowering but we do want to use a fair amount of the uh the brown so we're going to just dip into the brown get a little bit on our brush and we're going to just kind of get into these these crevasses and just kind of go to town and that's already looking good huh that's already kind of giving us that effect that we want looking weathered looking worn i'm gonna go in with a little bit of just the black too all right now here we go we're gonna start with the uh the highlights in the green so we're gonna be using this uh this muted this more muted green here that is nice and light and i'm just gonna put a bunch on the here we might hit this with another highlight in addition to but we're, we'll feel it out so we're gonna kind of just first start out hitting these like corners oh, yeah this is nice we will probably now that i'm seeing it on the surface we'll probably hit it with another highlight as well um but this is going to be really good we're going to stipple this and on here most of this like dinginess and stuff that we've added it's going to help really mute up a lot of these colors this is going to help just kind of mute that up but still be green just kind of hitting these these edges here like so and just help bring out the shape of the object I'll show you up close here in just a sec 
looking pretty good if you kind of a little 360 here you can see some of those highlights what that kind of did for us we're gonna go in with some some black and just darken up some of these areas a little bit just just to give it a little bit extra contrast then we'll go in with the gilding wax and then after that we'll hit it with a wash and then we'll be done you can see before that extra contrast after and now look at that line that we got there looks beautiful now we're gonna go in and i want to add go with the hard brush again with some gray over uh, a bunch of this and then we also got to hit some of these spots as well but i think the the gray to add, add in an extra you know layer of depth to this a little bit here before we come in with the uh, the highlight go into the side over here it's just kind of like the paint has worn down this thing's been flown across the map at the beginning of every match a million times it's been through it you know what i mean it's been it's seen some stuff so now we got a lot of that weathering kind of done all righty here we go this is the massively fun part all of this i love i love this style of painting the best part is this this is gilding wax i use it all the time and it is just fantastic so we're gonna again use the cheap brush i like to just take a little bit and then just put it on the palette that right there is probably going to be more than enough to do the whole piece get a lot of the excess off and then go on to the towel here get some more excess off a lot of these edges around here they're gonna be they're gonna be pretty heavily saturated with this stuff so the way i like to use it is i like to just do some swirling motion especially in the places where uh, it's gonna be like heavily saturated then go over like a dry brush I almost forgot we need to add in there's really only a couple of places with text it says warrior series right here and then there's some numbers up here i don't think i'm gonna go and do the numbers because in the reference they're pretty much worn it's really hard for me to tell what they actually are so we're probably gonna leave those off but we will do the warrior series part we're gonna go in i'm gonna pencil it in just really really lightly and then we're gonna paint it on and then we're gonna weather it up It's not perfect but it doesn't need to be because we're gonna we're gonna zhuzh it up right now so we're gonna go in with our rubbing buff and we're just gonna kind of dab it on the surface kind of break it up we're also gonna hit it with some of the brown and there it is you can read it if you if you if you look at it and there you go and here we are at the washing stage we're gonna get all of our washing tools out here we got our pre-mixed wash here we got our little foam brush and we have our paper towel to blot i'm just gonna drip it all over the surface here making sure i get it in these uh these grooves then we're gonna take our foam brush we're gonna just move this around the surface make sure it gets where it needs to go in these nooks and crannies now that's had uh you know a little bit of time to dry then we start blotting and then it's gonna leave some of that little bit of black and it is just a it is just a freaking awesome 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 effect just like that it's gonna dry into those little cracks and those crevices and it's just gonna help help us out in that uh in that contrast journey so now we're gonna we're gonna flip this over we're gonna do the same thing to this side when that dries we are left with this i love the way this thing turned out it's a simple little piece but i think it looks awesome be sure to subscribe because the next thing we're making for dismo is the locust sniper from black ops 3 it's enormous it's gonna be crazy thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one